The history of coffee is a fascinating story. The bean has traveled the globe for centuries and has changed entire nations and economies. It's remarkable how one small bean taken from tiny trees in Ethiopia could become the second largest commodity traded in the world today. Ever wondered where coffee came from, where this little bean got its start? In today's video, get ready to be taken on a journey through time and across continents. The story goes that that Chaldee discovered coffee after he noticed that after eating the berries from a certain tree, his goats became so energetic that they did not want to sleep at night. Chaldee reported his findings to the abbot of the local monastery, who made a drink with the berries and found that it kept him alert through the long hours of evening prayer. The abbot shared his discovery with the other monks at the monastery and knowledge of the energizing berries began to spread. As word moved east and coffee reached the Arabian Peninsula, it began a journey which would bring these beans across the globe. Coffee cultivation and trade began on the Arabian Peninsula. By the 15th century, coffee was being grown in the Yemeni district of Arabia, and by the 16th century, it was known in Persia, Egypt, Syria, and Turkey. Coffee was not only enjoyed in homes, but also in the many public coffee houses, called Kave Kane, which began to appear in cities across the Near East. The popularity of the coffee houses was unequaled and people frequented them for all kinds of social activity. Not only did the patrons drink coffee and engage in conversation, but they also listened to music, watched performers, played chess, and kept current on the news. Coffee houses quickly became such an important center for the exchange of information that they were often referred to as schools of the wise. European travelers to the Near East brought back stories of an unusual dark black beverage. By the 17th century, coffee had made its way to Europe and was becoming popular across the continent. Some people reacted to this new beverage with suspicion or fear calling it the bitter invention of Satan. Despite such controversy, coffee houses were quickly becoming centers of social activity and communication in the major cities of England, Austria, France, Germany, and Holland. In England, penny universities sprang up, so-called because for the price of a penny one could purchase a cup of coffee and engage in stimulating conversation. Coffee began to replace the common breakfast drink beverages of the time, beer and wine. Those who drank coffee instead of alcohol began the day alert and energized. And not surprisingly, the quality of their work was greatly improved. By the mid 17th century, there were over 300 coffee houses in London, many of which attracted like-minded patrons, including merchants, shippers, brokers and artists. Many businesses grew out of these specialized coffee houses. Coffee continued to be the favored drink in the new world until 1773, as demand for the beverage continued to spread. The Dutch finally got seedlings in the latter half of the 17th century. The plants thrived and soon the Dutch had a productive and growing trade in coffee. They then expanded the cultivation of coffee trees to the islands of Sumatra and celebs. Missionaries and travelers, traders and colonists continued to carry coffee seeds to new lands, and coffee trees were planted worldwide. Plantations were established in magnificent tropical forests. After crude oil, coffee is the most sought commodity in the world. That's the end. Thank you for watching.